Chief, thank you so much for your time. I'd like to start, if we could, by acknowledging the deaths from this riot. Uh, most recently, the Capitol officer who died defending the Capitol and Congress. Did you know Brian Sicknick? I did. Uh, when I had been the sergeant of arms is when he came on the job. I remember being at the swearing in testimony. Then, as I traveled around the Capitol complex, I would run into him. And he was distinguished because he was always so friendly. And, uh, uh, staff, senior staff who knew him, uh, because he was in the Capitol, it's mostly senior staff. Uh, he had a good relationship with them, and they would comment on how welcome he was when they came. This even makes it more personal, if it wasn't personal enough, because of all the time I and others said had worked up there and because of the symbolic nature of it. But it really, I think, emphasized to not only me, because I was knew about it, but maybe to the public on how hard those officers worked to fend off the attack by these people. Uh, even if there was some obvious gaps in how uh, it began and unfolded, the officers never gave up. Well, it's been pretty well established, Chief, that, that this was a, a catastrophic failure. Uh, two days later, you've had a chance to digest some of this. Where was the breakdown, do you think? Well, we're going to figure that out by looking at data and timing and who knew what when. But it just was obvious to me that the officers were outnumbered. So in a normal event like this, you would have had intelligence beforehand, intelligence that would consist of open source material and dark web material and, and things these uh, people were posting. And then clearly, the, a lot of agencies would have had other people mixed in with the crowd uh, down uh, at the ellipse, right by the White House. Mm -hmm. So there would have been an initial intel, and then the powers that be, the chief of police, his staff, and the Senate and House Sergeant of Arms would have digested that and then decided what level of security and how number, how many people they needed. And it's apparent that they uh, overestimated their ability to control the crowd, but they also underestimated the viciousness of the crowd and how big it was. So how exactly that broke down is not clear. When we watch that video from inside, the chaos, the scramble, the guns, the standoffs, this could have gone sideways in a hurry when you watch what happened. As you were seeing this unfold, what was your biggest concern? Well, that we would get someone into the building that had an improvised explosive device or a weapon. You know, so we go to great lengths, and I keep saying we because I feel like I'm still part of it. Uh, you know, I hired a lot of people, these people promoted them. So it, it's, it's, it's my home base there from a work point of view that, that, that all the efforts we put in to screen people were bypassed. And so that, that concerned me. And, but I also want to say the primary mission of the Capitol Police is the protection of life, the protection of the process, and the protection of the building. So that windows were broken, and we could talk about the windows, that is not the most catastrophic thing they can be. And so what I saw the officers on the interior doing when people were marauding and coming in there, they did lock down the House and Senate chambers. They were never breached while members or staff were in there. They were only breached when the order was to evacuate those and get the staff and the members out. So in run, one respect, the uh, Capitol Police uh, successfully got all the uh, congressional uh, leaders out, the second, third, and fourth uh, person behind the president of the United States. They got the members out. They got the staff out. It was very scary. They then, along with partners, uh, swept the building of people, swept the building for devices that may have been left, swept the building for any list devices that were put in there and within hours had the building back up and running, the members back in their respective chambers, and the duty that they were there to do was fulfilled. So in many respects, that's a positive. It's a negative that they got that far. And I wholeheartedly agree that there'll have to be a deep inspection of who, how, what, how, when, and where, why that happened. Uh, I feel bad both for the, uh, House, the House and Senate Sergeant of Arms and the Chief I know they are good people. I know they've dedicated their life to the protection all across the United States in a variety of positions. Uh, but the buck stops on the table of the chief, and in this case, the Senate and the House Sergeant of Arms, they're the primary people responsible, responsible for understanding the intelligence, 
making the decision and laying out a plan and making sure that the plan is executed properly. Chief Gaynor, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you.